And so I just want to emphasize the breadth of work that's happening at XPRIZE is that it's not one group, it's not one idea, it's really, it is sort of what are the biggest stop gaps in humanity and how do we tackle them? And one of the biggest stop gaps is human health and aging. So I love to bring up um, and have you explain maybe what XPRIZE is, what the mission is, and how you decided to join the company. Oh, gosh, this is a great question. So I was actually in the lab minding my own business, um, had started working on different mapping projects and looking at, at, you know, some of the molecular cellular features that underlie sort of both muscle and adipose tissue uh, decline and sort of what their functional consequences are and thinking of interventions and still designing, still waiting on TAME, still doing a lot of work. And um, I got a call and I thought the call was going to be too. Yes, from Peter. Okay. As I got a completely out of the blue, I got a call from Peter Diamandis, actually, and, and a couple of Peter's um, headhunters that apparently they had gotten my name from a few people. I'd had some success in the previous years, especially in 2022. I had a series of, of big awards, which was a really, really incredible nod from my fellow scientists, which I'm incredibly grateful for. The Vincent Cristofalo Award from American Federation for Aging Research, and in the same year, the Nathan Schock uh, Award from NIA. So, and had a couple of those that came through, and you know, it was great. So I was so kind of like, I got the call, and I thought they were going to ask me to maybe be an advisor or to ask about it or whatever it was. Maybe they saw my name somewhere because of those. And apparently some, a few folks had recommended me to them as somebody who was doing work in early translation and in geoscience. And I'd never even heard of XPRIZE. I had to Google them before we had our call. Well, Jamie, can, I mean, I, can, can, can you please do, <laughs> do us a favor to our listener and describe Peter? Yes. Because he's a driving force. Peter. He's like, like, he's like a near Barzillai. So give us some. He's a uh, near Barzillai. That is an exact, that is a great way to think about him. He, yes. Peter is another one. He is a force of nature. Is that Peter has a really dynamic personality and he is deeply, deeply committed to aging and longevity the science, the companies that are driving it, the ideas that are out there. And so, yeah, so Peter has been completely committed to this, has dedicated so much of his life to it. And he is also, he is as enthusiastic about this as he has so many other things. <laughs> and so space, for instance, is, you know, XPRIZE began with space. So XPRIZE, and again, the name, it's not extreme, <laughs> you know, XPRIZE is actually, it's solved for X is that we know there are huge problems that we don't have solutions for. And so one way of going about finding solutions, right? A traditional academic, uh, uh, my funding structure is the research organizations or others, they put big money up front, people compete for it, they get the money, they do the research and, and it goes and that's fine. What Peter has done is use a prize model. It's to say, okay, here's the biggest problem we can think of. Instead of funding up front, here is the big carrot on the stick. We'll define the problem. We'll set up the start line and we'll tell you what the finish line is in order to get the funds, solve for X and get the prize. And so, I mean, this is really, this is the concept. And so in order to get there, what it does is it incentivizes funding and investment in these key areas because it often requires sometimes 10 times or the prize funds that you get at the end in order to really begin the process and fully design and develop and test whatever this is. And as I mentioned, XPRIZE started in space, you know, is it to actually begin to develop sort of commercialized models for space. Not you know, cheap. This is right. Yeah. <laughs> Not cheap <laughs> and definitely ambitious. But within prize models, the goal wasn't the first person to get to the moon using commercialized, you know, space and, you know, privatized, whatever this is, some non government entity. That's not. The prize, the prize was, you know, 100 kilometers, two times on a manned shuttle, and it had to be done twice within two weeks so that it needs to be reasonable manned space flight. And so that's not Mars. That's not the moon. That's very tangible start line, finish line, go. And that they got a winner. 
And not only did they get a winner, but they got a huge investment that went into the space. It drew attention to it, puts a huge spotlight on it and gets people excited and thinking about it and doing it. And so this is sort of the Peter mindset is always this sort of like, okay, what's next? What's crazy? What's far enough away? But then how do you make it practical enough that somebody will start down the path? But crazy enough that when you first read it, you're like, that's insane. I'm not going to do it. No one can do it. And so there's this really kind of dynamic balance. And so Peter's uh, just with space is where he started. And that's XPRIZE's foundation. Um, XPRIZE is now led by our CEO, Anusha Ansari. So that first space prize is actually was the Ansari X Prize. And so that money was put up first by, by Anusha and her family. She's actually one of the first Iranian-American women who was on the International Space Station. She's an absolute hero. She's a, a very, very incredible woman. And um, so she's my boss now. I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so, I mean, so this is the X-Prize culture is that, you know, it's exciting. It's fun. Yeah, we're a nonprofit foundation. We are driven entirely by either by private industry, by private groups. So these are HealthSpan, for example, has a couple of nonprofit foundations have given funding and have, uh, uh, gosh, we have 19 different sponsors for our prize alone that have contributed in some way, either as individuals, as persons who are just interested in the space, as philanthropists, that they contribute to these, you know, large scale prizes, that they know that these are the important areas, that if we don't come up with solutions fast and accelerate progress, we're never going to get there. And so again, so this is that kind of X prize model. And so now they've grown from space. They have a hundred million dollar prize urban removal. They have prizes in rainforest surveillance. They also have wildfire prizes of you know, how do we mitigate and, and advance our response time to decrease the damage from wildfire? There are some really incredible launches. When we launched, the Healthspan Prize was the largest prize out of X Prize, the largest one, one million dollars. I hate to say it, but we have now been surpassed. On February 29th, there was a $119 million prize in water scarcity. So this is to accelerate and advance uh, water desalination at no and affordable. And so there are it's really incredible into efforts from there. There's also one of our most recent prize launch is a Google Quantum prize that is to accelerate and advance quantum computing. And so I just want to emphasize the breadth of work that's happening at XPRIZE is that it's not one group. It's not one idea. It's really, it is sort of what are the biggest stop gaps in humanity and how do we tackle them? And one of the biggest stop gaps is human health and aging is we're living long than any humans before us. Yeah. We have, you know, currently over over 30 years gained in expect life expectancy just in the last 100 years due to various public health measures, anything from clean water to vaccination to maternal care and on and on and better trauma care as well, right, is that the things that used to kill us no longer do. And so what we've done is we've prolonged life. We're less dead for some of those years. Is that right? Is that we haven't necessarily ch changed the fundamental biology that changes the rate at which we age. And so despite having an extension in life, is that there's a number of those years that are spent in poor quality health, then our systems or even us as individuals are willing to really deal with. And so this has huge global consequences. Yes, it's an economic burden, but I think it's one that we all feel very personally, either ourselves or if we're caring for loved ones, is that it's a really incredible challenge and that I don't think any single group is ready or able to do it on their own. And so that's where these sort of large scale initiatives come in is what is the areas that we need the most investment that are being either they don't have a lot of them right now they don't have adequate attention, or they've reached some critical barrier that they have not been able to surpass on their own and need sort of a large push. And I think aging has really been in this latter category. I think people have been fascinated with immortality and long life and good life forever. I think it's innate. 
Yeah, but uh, yeah. but again, I I don't think that the uh, the X price for health uh, health span is uh, uh, for immortality. Is uh, not for immortality. It's you, you, really not. You you have much more. We're talking about health. This is yeah. again. This goes back to my roots. What we're doing is function, and so this is the enterprise and our health span readouts are the things that again, when we're talking to people about what's important is that, yes, aging has been important. We've talked about it, thought about it forever. I mean, fountains of youth, all of these things, they're, they're in mythology everywhere. But what means something to us is being able to live within the years that we have. And I think that's the real fear is being lonely, being disengaged, not having the ability to leave our house. And so that could be from physical disability, inability to cross a crosswalk in time, that's a major barrier for a lot of people. Yeah. Having the balance and the ability to respond to external challenges so that you're not going to fall off a curb or trip on a crack and have it be devastating. To have the cognitive ability to remember when I get to the grocery store, not just to walk around the grocery store, but to remember what I'm there to get anyway. And we want to be able to engage with kids and grandkids and loved ones and others. And I think we've all learned through a national pandemic, right, is that in order to stay engaged, we need to have the resilience necessary to meet challenges. That's really when I'm thinking about independence and the things that drive disability and drive disengagement with aging and apathy that a lot of us either feel personally or are afraid of, is that they start with these really core kernels that can be measured in humans and we think are intervenable, right? So these are, again, these core, core components, they're measurable we think they can be improved and they are have at least the right kind of measurement characteristics that we can show again, not just are we delaying some disease condition, but are we fundamentally changing how we exist in our environment? And that's that more sort of fundamental aging kind of concept. And that's just why we think about it as a health span prize. Um, again, we're not looking at how long people live. This is a one-year prize. Actually, no, this is the year prize. But for our finalists to win, they're going to have to conduct one-year clinical studies. So that means that they take their intervention, whatever it is, and we can talk about the different kinds that are out there and different options, but they're going to have to take whatever that therapeutic is, completely agnostic, as long as it's relatively safe. But they have to do this in humans who are already older, probably have some Maybe they're at risk for functional decline or they're starting to already see it. They have to give that therapeutic for one year. We measure them at the beginning of the year. They'll probably have a midpoint and we measure at the end. And we look at the change over that time in those three essential functions, physical, cognitive, immune. And we need to be able to show improvement in one year in those persons who are treated relative to ones who are not. And that threshold of showing, again, not just a chip that's like maybe they're, it's a, they're attenuating the decline. We actually want to show that we're optimizing and improving. And so, again, those are the three metrics, and it has to be one, two, and three. Yeah. So that's going to be incredibly, incredibly hard. And that if we can see that magnitude of that change is sufficient to offset declines you'd expect in 10, 15, or 20 years, that's what we're adding, putting the money to.